Hello, uh, the next section is on metal processing and I'm going to cover the different types of processing techniques that are used in the medical device manufacturing industry to make metal components. Uh, so first up, uh, let's look at uh, where what happens to the metal in the first instance. So the metallic raw material comes in in bulk form and it can be either cast or forged, uh, rolled, put into powder production or heat treated. And as we discussed in a previous section, this is done to maybe to alter the mechanical properties, to make it uh, tougher, to strengthen it. Um, and then it's formed into its stock shape. And uh, stock shapes can be bars, wires, plates, um, sheets, tubes, or powder. So this is an example of some stock bars. Uh, these are sent to the manufacturing, the medical device manufacturing companies, um, and uh, the metallic components are then fabricated using investment casting, CAD, CAM techniques, grinding, and powder metallurgy, and other ones which we will discuss in the next few sections. So, uh, as I said, the stock shapes arrive in and there, there's a number of different methods of uh, making a metal medical device. Uh, so the few that I'm going to talk about in this course, we'll talk about casting, um, machining and various different types of machining. Uh, I've by no means an exhaustive list, but I'll, I'll try and cover a few. Rapid prototyping and powder metallurgy. So the processing technique that's used, this is going to depend on the metal uh, that is being processed. So cobalt alloys, for example, they cannot be easily machined because they're very hard and they're not easily shaped. Um, so they are either cast uh, or processed using powder processing techniques. So we'll have a look at that again later. Uh, on the other hand, then, metal titanium cannot be easily cast, but it can be very readily machined. So depending on the material that you have, uh, the type of device that you're trying to make, the type of tolerance that you're trying to achieve, so how specific do you need your dimensions um, achieved, how, um, how difficult is the device to make, how intricate is the design, these are all going to influence what processing technique is used. I'm going to start with casting. It's one of the most traditional. It's been around a long, 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 long time um, in the metal foundry industry. So it involves as a first step the manufacture of a model of the part to be produced by casting. And this model is either wooden, but more often than not, it's wax based. So a wax model is made of the part that you want to be produced um, or some other easily formed uh, material. Um, and lately, with the uh, you know the advent of 3D printing and rapid prototyping, it's actually very easy now to get a wax 3D model. So the uh, the the part to be created uh, is drawn in a CAD package, um, and then a 3D model of that is printed using a 3D printing technique, and this is the object printed in wax. The next thing that happens then is that the um, a mold is made around the object in wax. So uh, usually what happens is the, the wax object is, is dipped into a ceramic slurry and it, this is, happens uh, numerous times and um, the ceramic slurry hardens and now you have a ceramic mold of the part to be manufactured. Uh, the wax is then me uh, melted out so the whole thing is heated, the wax melts, it leaves the mold, and you're left with a mold of the objects you want to create. Um, and here is a, uh, I suppose, a, a cube-like mold uh, with the internal shape of the piece to be created. Um, so the next thing that happens then is molten metal is poured into the mold. And the molten metal is allowed to solidify and cool. And then the ceramic mold is cracked off and you get a final object in uh, metal. 
and that is how investment casting works. So I said it's a very old technique. Uh, it is used. It's used uh, in prost prosthetic manufacturing. It has been used traditionally, uh, and still is used for for a number of different medical devices. So just looking at the theory again, is a cast is formed around the model to form the exact same shape as the model. The cast is usually a sand-based composite material that hardens into a strong shell and it can be opened in two halves. Once the cast has been formed, the model is removed and hot molten metal is poured into the cavity of the cast and allowed to cool under controlled conditions. Once the product has cooled sufficiently, then the cast is opened and the metal part is removed and the process can then be repeated. Um, so it, it's a good technique. It's been in existence. We know it works. Um, there is a lot of waste in this technique. So the, the, uh, the mold is thrown away um, and the, the process starts again. I suppose the advantages in recent years have been the ability to 3D print a model, uh, whereas traditionally the, the, the wax model may have been machined, um, but we can get tighter and tighter tolerances now around the, um, the 3D model. So just some images of it in action. Um, so here we, we see uh, this is where molten metal has been poured into uh, what's called the sprue and gate. And these are um, the cast, the ceramic cast of the piece to be manufactured or the mold. Um, so they are so you can make numerous parts on the same um, sprue. And um, once this metal cools down, so it's left to cool down, um, these are all broken off. And the ceramic is split in two and you take out your metal part. And, uh, and then it goes away to be finished. So it might be polished um, after that or electrochemically treated. Okay, so that concludes the section on investment casting. And uh, there's plenty more information about it uh, via other sources. Thank you very much.